Gabriel Garcia Marquez. And his uh, full name is Gabriel Jose Garcia Marquez. And the Jose, you should uh, remember that this same title is used in the two or three characters in 100 years of solitude. So Gabriel Garcia Marquez, he was born in Colombia, especially in a city named Aracataca. And he died in Mexico City, Mexico. His nationality is Colombian. And he studied University at National de Colombia. And he is a writer, especially he has written novels and short stories. And the Latin American literature came as important literature in the 20th century. And that has been done by this very writer, what we are going to read today, that is Gabriel Garcia Marquez. And he is famous for his notable writings, that is 100 years of solitude. And in it, we have observed the combination or the fluctuation or the juxtaposition of two reality, one that is the reality itself and another is fantastic reality. And the combination of these uh, two realities, he has been termed as a point or a motive or view of literature or genre that is called magic realism. So in English literature, especially, in Latin American literature, Gabriel Garcia Marquez initiated Latin American literature in a way that created a boom in Latin American literary history and as well as a new technique of uh, writing and new technique of reading literature and viewing literature that is magic realism. And the other writer writings of these notable writers, the autumn of the patriarch, love of the time of cholera, love in the time of cholera, only the law of the dead or told, and notable way awards. Nustad International Prize for Literature, 1972, and Nobel Prize Literature in 19. And his wife's name is Mercedes Barça Pardo, and children Rodrigo and Rodrigo. So this is Gabriel Jose Garcia Mondej. And you see that Colombia is a country of North America, and in the north side, of the country uh, is Caribbean Sea, and the Northwest by Panama, and the South by Ecuador and Peru, and the East by Venezuela, and the South is by Brazil, and the West by the Pacific Ocean. So this is the country where our writer, Gabriel Garcia Marquez was born. And uh, the language of this country is Spanish. So the novel we read today, that is 100 years of solitude, it was written in Spanish. And next time it was translated in English. One of the Italian translators, he translated this novel in English. Marquis nickname was Gobo or Gabo or Gabito. And like the strange banana town of Macando in 100 years of solitude, when we will see or read the novel 100 years of solitude, we will see the presence of a village 
and that village shape is like a banana tree or banana town. And his home city or the home uh, or the home town or the village, it is not town, place, is a tiny Colombian village uh, called Aracataca near the Caribbean coast that, uh, that we have seen in the Caribbean coast. That means his birthplace is very close to the sea coast, that is the Caribbean coast, and a small village, and its name is Aracataca. And he seems not to have known his father and didn't meet his father until he was almost eight years old. That means he was brought up by his grandparents. And the, his grandparents is the most decisive literary figure or literary influence for Gabriel Garcia Marquez. And when his grandfather did, uh, actually uh, Marquez was eight years old. And uh, when a repeater asked Marquez that how you have got so many wealth, then he had said that it's the style of my grandmother. It means that Gabriel Garcia Marquez was brought up by his grandparents and among his grandparents, his grandfather was a, was a literary influence for him. And you will see a character in 100 years of solitude, there you see a character named Colonel uh, in some pity that Colonel, that Colonel is uh, uh, similar in attitude to Gabriel Garcia Marquez's grandfather. Marquez's grandfather is I influence, as you have said, and he is the colonel of 100 years of life. It was a traumatic event in Colombia historical consciousness. Following the signing of the peace treaty, the revolution suddenly erupted and the economy lost its Panama territory, the Canal Zone, the United States Back Republic arose in its place. That means uh, Colombia involved in a civil war that war is called the War of Thousand Days. And in that war, uh, with In that war, he was supported by the American force. However, the press treaty was signed and they lost Colombia, lost its control on Canal Joe. That created a negative effect of the economy of Colombia. And before this time, this place, Arakaka, Arakataka had hesitated alone in almost total isolation from the world. What we see, that means in the remote villages of Bangladesh, if you were to visit the villages of Bangladesh, and uh, once upon a time, that means nearly 30 years back in this village, there was no communication system in this place and no electricity, no metal roads, no newspapers. Okay. So uh, the Marquis's place was remoter than these places. And this place was is called isolated from the modern world as well as this village was isolated from the happenings of the world that was happening at the same time. Living in this place, Marquis and Marquis's family were not aware of the thing that was going on in the world. Uh, isolation, that is the physical isolation, as well as 
such kinds of isolation happens in mentally that can be called mental isolation so both type of isolation in the history of marquis's place we see that the village was physically isolated from the modern world but in the novel 100 years of solitude the reader will observe that the villagers of makando a fictional village that people were mentally isolated and such kinds of mental isolation create the isolation creates some negative effect to the mentality of several characters that when we will discuss the uh, novel then the idea might be clear so like the fictional makando the village of arakanda had been founded by colombian civil war refugees and when the united fruit company established a banana headquarters there arakanda became the scene of many labor protests and massacres at the time of the civil war we have understood that there was a, a civil war in Colombia that can be called 1000 days where at that time the village Makando or the Arakanta where the uh, writer was born that place was taken as a banana headquarters to supply over there and that place was established by the Colombian civil war refugees and at the time when such kind of um, gathering will be there so protest by the laborers and also when protest will come such kind of massacres that means killing without any discrimination such kind of killings and protest was also common in the history of the village Ara, Arakataka, where our writer eventually the banana company was forced to leave all this in series becomes material for the action in the author's fiction. That is, hundred years of solitude. In 1940, Gabriel Garcia Marquez left Aracanta for Bagoda, where he attended a Jesuit school. After graduation, he began to study law at the University of Bagoda, but found he as he says that law has nothing to do with justice it means that he studied law but he had some opposite or some practical or the real feelings towards law how law can preserve peace and prosperity in the society but that will the was in opposite view that always the law cannot establish peace. So he had been studying law at the University of Bagoda. When political violence closed the university, he transferred his studies to the city of Carthagena. He was at best a desultory uh, student. He began working as a journalist there and in the poor town of Barakoria from 1950 to 1952, he wrote a column called the La Girafa, a heraldo of Barangulia. There, that means the first job. When the university was closed, what he was supposed to do, he started working as a journalist. And his writing at the time was heavily spiced with the irony and modern humor so characteristics of his later fiction so irony and humor but that kind of humor naturally humor as a naturally genre humor will make you laugh and through the presentation of first incident the writers are very much serious in presenting their motive but Gabriel Garcia Marquez's humor is so much bitter and morbid that uh, was also a signatory characteristics 
of the DMR, microbial gas DMR is a fiction that we will read next time. His first published stories, however, appeared in 1947 while he was a student of Bagoda. Quoting law school, he moved to Barakulia, where he became involved in a small group of writers and newsmen who knew his work. He had now turned altogether to journalism, taking a job as a newspaper columnist. In 1954, he returned to Bagoda as a film critic and a reporter. So you see, whenever a person will will go to several types of profession, such kinds of professional experience will give input to the writer's experience. And such kinds of incidents we see in Gabriel Garcia Martinez's character. So he switches his character from uh, journalist to film critic and the reporter. For the Colombian newspaper, El Espectador is the name, the Spanish name of the newspaper. And the newspaper based especially film critic and uh, reporters activities were done by our writer. As a reporter, he once said, I was the lowest on the paper and wanted to be. Other writers always wanted to get to the editorial page, but I wanted to cover tires and fire. Though he was a field kid. So, uh, he, uh, this interest to some other fields, that means the social crimes and the social injustice, that was the interest in Marquis's uh, writing or uh, column writing. But he was working as a field kid. He appeared then as a critic, William Kennedy, who he to have as much as Ben Hutch as Hemingway in him. Uh, this is Ben Hutch, that means a film critic, American screenwriter. And uh, Kennedy found the similarity between Ben Hutch and the film critic, our writer, Gabriel Garcia Marquez. One might add that he had a touch of Baroon and Ballet showmanship in his in, in him as well. Uh, Baroon and Ballet is the world's greatest circus show. They also really launched the, the greatest show on earth. And such kind of attitude. So the Baroon and Ballet, they showed their a craftsmanship, this circus company showed their craftsmanship in such a way that the greatest show on art. In the same way, our writer Gabriel Garcia Marquez has a showmanship and that attitude we see in his life. And in his career, uh, a remote jungle place was reported that uh, a Gabriel Garcia Marquez and photographer were sent to get this village. That means some kind of rebellion happened in that village. So they, they arrived there very, with very difficult tribal and discovered the sleepy place and the correspondent trying to find relief from the heat of a hammock. In a hammock. Secondly, uh, uh, photographer and Marquez went there and found that there is no rebellion. Okay, uh, but the temperature was very high. They wanted to uh, there. So uh, at that time, the the story had been taken to protest the correspondent assignments with the help of the siren and that. So when some kind of information was passed to uh, the headquarters of the newspaper, the authority was not very much happy that no, we had got, we had information that 
the village is in rebellion, but you are speaking that the whole rebellion of the, uh, was there. At that time, Marquis arranged some sirens and the drums and gathered some people and uh, put it in a way that the village is in rebellion. And then uh, the story, when he sent back his story, an army of the reporters arrived to cover the rebellion. So this is the Gabriel Garcia Marquis. Perhaps the most important point in his career as a news a paper man came in 1966 when a sailor named Luis Arjandro Alesso came in El Espectado to tell his incredible survival at the sea. So this sailor came to that newspaper office and said that yes, I was, um, uh, I had a story, I, I, I survived in the at, at sea in a very uh, critical moment. So the editor on the paper suggested that the sailor talk to Garcia Marquez. So Marquez was appointed to get the story of this sailor. Uh, Marquez interview turned out to be a 14 chapter expose narrated in the first person and signed. By the 20 year old Man. Along other relations, the sailor reported that the destroyer had not encountered a storm at all, but instead had been carrying black market goods on a ship. So the information finally came towards the light that the sailor gave that the, uh, the ship had been carrying. Uh, black market goods, and actually there was no storm. So what kind of incidents uh, embarrassed the government? And later the account was published in book from under Garcia Marquez's name in uh, 1972. And the first time he was credited with authoring the piece. So the history of Marquez's newspaper career is one of the famous history that is the sailor's interview that he covered, Marquez covered. The title of the book was The Tale of a Shipwrecked Sailor Who Was Added 10 Days on a Life Wrapped with a Food of Water, Who Was Proclaimed the Hero of the Nation. It's by beauty, queens, and maids, rich by publicity, and then loathed by the government and the forgotten forever. So this is the first item that our writer Marquez did in his life and that was happened in 1970. Before that, he wrote some articles or something else, a little bit more, uh, not very much significant. In 1954, Marquez was assigned to the uh, Vatican, assigned to the Vatican as a correspondent of the newspaper while we have to He had just completed Leave is Strong, his first serious writing, and he planned to become a director and the film his own version of Lee Strong. After some months of study, he moved to Paris and learned that the Rojas Penilla dictatorship had closed uh, with the newspaper El Espectador, and that was that he became jobless. So he was in Paris, and at that time, he got the information that he, be, he lost his um, job because the newspaper has been closed by the actually the government. He stayed in Paris and began a short story about the violence. His language become made more resonant and more rhythmic with dialogue appearing more frequently than before. His long, history, long short story expanded quickly into a short novel, Leap is Gone. And then two more novels appeared. The last, which he completed, first he became No One Writes to the Colonel. Colonel. Uh, he rewrote one, No One Writes to the Colonel in 11 times. And the, his first novel about violence was called The Evil Hour. In Paris, Marquis had. He lived on daily miracles. Actually, 
he was a foreigner. He was not permitted to work. Most probably, you know that in European countries, if you visit there, you can work because in your visit visa, you are not allowed to work there. So Marcus didn't have the permission to work in Paris because he went there to um, cover a story of his newspaper. But, and he didn't know French and uh, had run out of cash. And also he had no money in his pocket. So this pitiable condition can be termed by markets that actually in every day, how we, I would survive the day, how I will be get fooling and lodging and other stuffs for my daily life. That was a totally miracle in which we are indicating this stuff while standing in, while uh, living in Paris after losing my job in an expected order. He was living on credit, a Latin quarter hotel, and owed some one thousand one lakh twenty three old old uh, francs. He once said that he reboiled chicken bones to make uh, broth for his daily meals. You can understand that what is the scenario? That the chicken bone in the European countries, the chicken fry is very natural and they don't very much interest to, uh, to use this chicken bone. They throw away the chicken bone. But that uh, chicken bone become a instrument that become a way of our writers uh, living because he had no money, he had no job, and he was not allowed to work in Paris at the time. The hotel sensing his disparate spree never tried to collect. The management trusted him, so he says, because they saw him working in his room and all that the whole time. So the authority, hotel authority was uh, very much sympathetic to our writer, job This kind of hand to mouth existence continued until one night when he sneaked into a maid's room and he was caught, but his new landlord let him live in an attic which when his money ran out so that he was able to continue writing. Actually, he uh, sneaked, that means he is stealthily entered into a room to steal something or to have some food. However, he was caught and such kind of incident become a fortune for our writer and he got a cost place, that means the attic or the upper, uh, upper store room of a building to live on. And that is a uh, irony or, or a benefit in disguise. And that is in, uh, happened in uh, Marquis's life. And for this day, the, the Paris, three years Paris life was a life of miracle. Looking back on these three years of poverty, he concludes, if I hadn't lived those three years probably I would not be a writer. Actually, the severe reality of a person's life can be the best definition. The human sorrow feeling and also the feelings of happiness can be written in literary genre. But the joyous literature or the romantic literature is full of appeal. However, the literature where we see the severe reality of human life experience, that might be very much, very much, what should I say, very much a literature that will create appeal to a reader's mind. So such kind of attitude had our writer Gabriel Garcia Marquez that when he had been living in Paris, he said that I wouldn't have, a, I wouldn't be a writer if I wouldn't pass the three years in Paris. Here I learned that nobody dies of hunger. 
and that one is capable of sleeping under bridges. Before that, actually, many of us can't think that we can pass a night in the railway station. We can pass a night outside our room. But before this incident, such kind of attitude was uh, to Gabriel Garcia Marquez that he didn't think that it is totally impossible to pass a night under a bridge. But at that time, three years time here in Paris, Gabriel Garcia Marquez had such kind of experience. And that kind of experience became the materials of his next writing, that is 100 years of solitude. And that uh, with the mixture of some other incidents. And for this region, we are reading details, actually, the writer's biography that will help us understand his motive because Gabriel Garcia Marquez's 100 years of, of solitude is a celebrated novel in the 20th century as well as it's very much complex to pinpoint several ideas and the ideology imposed in this writer. And for this reason, we are reading the details that will help you and help us to understand the novel very closely. In 1957, he sold, news, uh, he sold newspaper editors in Bogota and Caracas on the idea of a series of 10 articles about socialist Eastern European countries. Okay, so in, uh, there he sold some uh, ideas to the newspaper, especially the socialist Eastern European countries. Subsequently, he returned to Colombo to marry his fiancée, Mercedes, the model for the Mercedes of the beautiful neck and sleepy eyes in his 100 years of solitude. So this fictional Mercedes, Mercedes is also engaged to a fictional uh, Gabriel. So we see this attitude in uh, not in well. Marquez then moved to Venezuela when a newsman on a socialist country to country to fly new Apelo Menjoda became editor of the Momento, a Caracas magazine, and hired young Garcia Marquez. So Marcia Marquez joined there, moved to Venezuela. And it was a uh, Caracas, as he reported on the last days of the Paris uh, Jimenez dictatorship, and he finished Big Mama's funeral, another novel, a collection of forty stories, and published in Mexico. Only one story is set in Macando, however, the rest are set in unnamed name. He left Momento and went to work for Venezuela Grafica another magazine, sometimes called Venezuela Pornographica, in characters beside him resembles both Playboy and Penthouse. Marquez, needless to say, was not put off by the non-literary quality of his work. I am impressed in personal life, he said. I read all the gossip in all the magazine, and I believe it all actually for his career in news as a newspaper reporter. Marquez uh, read the story of several uh, anonymous writer or reader and he wrote that and he was interested. It means that he had interest in human's life. That means um, life of a human being, how they experience such kind of incident in their life. After the Cuban revolution, he opened the Bogota office, Presana Latina, Cuba's revolution in He had been a socialist since his military students days at the university. And then in 1960, he represented Presa Latina in the United Nations 15th General Assembly. The same year, former Russian Premier Nikita Rousseff used his shoe as a gavel there. He visited Havana in 1961 and went to New York to become 
Presa Latina's assistant Guru Che. He resigned during an internal dispute concerning party and party ideology, living with his boss after only a few months in New York City. He says that his visa was withdrawn by the US government. So he went to the US and New York in 1961. And at the time, the Cuba's revolutionary revolution happened. And you know that Cuba is a socialist country. And when uh, Gabriel Garcia Marquez went to America, uh, New York City, and that city, um, he had a clash with the uh, newspaper uh, agencies he had been working at 40 days and he resigned from that job. And at the same time, the government, US government, withdrew his visa. And US immigration authorities, while he has preparing to leave with his wife and son, Rodrigo for Mexico City. So when the visa is allowed, so, uh, and he, he actually, he was uh, trying to leave New York and went to Mexico, uh, to, wanted to go to Mexico at the time when visa was returned. This experience was too embittered him for some time afterwards. New York, he said later, was responsible for withdrawing my vision. As a city, New York is the greatest phenomenon of the 20th century, and therefore it's a serious restriction on one's life not to be able to come here every year, even for a week. Okay, so some kind of restriction he has imposed. I, but I doubt if I have a strong enough nerves to live in New York, I find it so overwhelming. The United States is an extraordinary country, a nation that creates such a city in the world, and the rest of the country, which has nothing to do with the system or the government, could do anything. So when Marcia Marquez received his visa back, he left immediately for Mexico City, going to Greyhound Bus. So you knew that New York and then Mexico City, a very surrounding country. So he started his journey through bus. And the deep south, in homage of Faulkner, American writer and novel, writer, novel laureate, with my books under my arms. So he wrote some books, and taking the books, he started the journey and left America for his hometown. He, uh, he, uh, he noted signs on his way advising that dogs and Americans were prohibited. He thus found himself barred from the hotels because of his dark Latin complexion. The biogothic clads mistaking him as a Mexican. Upon being served as a fleet milligan with a pitch and syrup on our feet, in New Orleans, he fled to Mexico City without further delay. So he went to in Mexico City with only a one hundred dollar in my pockets. He began slowly, with great difficulty, a new career as a screen writer. Again, he became the screen writer. He wrote film script, some in collaboration with Mexican novelist Carlos Fuentes. Several of these scripts became movies. One of his stories, There Are No Thieves in His Town, was filmed by the experimental group for presentation at the 1965 Locando Film Festival. At another time, he worked as, a, as an editor and once did publicity for the J. Walter Thompson office in Mexico City. During this period, almost six years, he wrote only one short story. And it was a very bad time for me, he says, and confessed a suffocating time. So, uh, Marquez always tried to do something all by his own. And that was the previously done work was a joint venture. Meanwhile, his friend had arranged for him two recent books to be published. In 1962, The Evil Hour, which had been completed in Mexico and initially published in Spain and had been published, but 
only oppressed. We have all our Colombian literary rights. The original title of the novel had yes to uh, the town of Dan. The title was changed at the suggestion of the author's friends, but not without some objection from Garcia Marquez. Marquez had now uh, written four books of literary merit. The novels Live Strong, The Evil Hour, a novella entitled No One Writes to the Colonel, and a short history collection, Big Mama's Funeral. So these are the writing up to 1962. In January 1965, while driving from Mexico City to Acapulco, he began plans for 100 years of solitude. The canonial text that represents the text of Garcia Garcia Marquez. So promising enough. All his previous work can be can be seen as a preliminary exercise on this masterpiece. So every experience of writer's life initiated in a way, directly or indirectly, in this novel, uh, 100 years of Sarupo. He later told an Argentine writer that he could have dictated an entire chapter on the spot if he had had a tape recorder. He went home and told his wife, don't bother me, especially don't bother me about money. And he started writing. When he says that he had been boarding over since he was 16. Actually, when he started writing 100 years of solitude, he found that this is the actual field that he was interested. He had interest, and from his very uh, child, from his very teenage, he had been trying to do the work that he is um, writing at this moment. His text was called "Cave of the Mafia," and he had worked for eight to ten hours a day for eighteen months. So one and a half year he spent sitting on his desk writing this novel when he had finished the novel his wife informed him that they owed twelve thousand dollars wow. and he had sustained them by borrowing from friends paying for the groceries on monthly installment and not paying any rent to the landlords of for six months. Every great man under every great man there is a uh, robot that every great man there is a woman. Since this figure, we see that Gabriel Garcia Marquez was in the cave of his writing, and in this one year, six months, his family and everything was maintained by his family, by, by his wife, Mercedes. And that is done. Garcia Marquez says that he again began writing straight off without a break and afterwards made a great many corrections on the manuscript, made copies and corrected it again. Now, however, he corrects line by line as he works. He dates his interest in writing to an impulse to draw comics as a science. So, uh, literally uh, everything. Uh, in which way we see in the children literature some kind of in enthusiasm he had at the time of writing 100 years of solitude. Garcia Marquez sent for the first three chapters of 100 years of solitude to Carlos Fuentes, who along with the Argentinian writer Julio Portejar was an early fan and supporter. Quintus was so impressed that he wrote to the Mexican magazine, I have just finished reading the first 75 pages of the 100 Years of Solitude, and they are absolutely majestical. 100 Years of Solitude was published initially in Buenos Aires, Argentina, in 1967 by editorial Suda Medicana. 
and it was translated in English by George Rabasa, a winner of the National Book Award for his translation of Julio Cortaz of Scotch. So, uh, 100 years of slavery was published in Argentina, and no official language in Spanish that is published in 1907, and it was then translated in English by Gregory Rabasa. In 1972, uh, in 1970, 100 years of slavery was published in English by Hebert and Roth, and it, it drew universal critical acclaim and on the Prix du Melier Lip Stranger in France in 1962 and 69. And that same year, it was on Italy's coveted literary award, the Premio Sica Cianciano. In 1970, the novel was chosen as one of the 12 best books for the year by many African critics. In 1972, Gabriel Garcia Marquez won the Romolo Gallos Prize in Venezuela and the books abroad uh, uh, news that international prize for literature. And finally, he was awarded a 1982 Nobel Prize in Literature. And in his Nobel lecture of his court home, he declared that this, my friend, is the very skill of our solitude about the book. In spite of his to oppression, plundering, and abandonment, we respond with life. So the happening of the life, we feel in surprise. And neither flags for nor flags or famines nor uh, cataclysms, nor even the eternal wires of century upon century have been able to subdue the persistent advantage of life over faith. So life and faith, the reality of the life we see and we experience with surprise. On a day like today, my master William Faulkner said, I decline to accept the end of a man. That means a man will be alive for his deeds. I would feel unworthy of standing in this place that was his if I were not fully aware that the closal tragedy he refused to recognize 32 years ago is now. For the first time since the beginning of the humanity, nothing more than a simple scientific possibility. So this is his uh, Nobel Prize taking our, our uh, speech. Faced with the awesome reality that must have seemed a mere utopia through all the human time. And we, the inventors of tales, who will be believe anything, feel entitled to believe, and it is not yet too late to engage in the creation of opposite utopia. So the realities of life, and such a realities and experience of life cannot be presented with the mere reality. So another shot of reality is needed to create an opposite utopian land for the human life, opposite utopia for the human life. And that is created by a new form of reality that is called magic reality. That is the combination of two reality reality and magic magic and reality and the fusion of two kinds of reality get a new utopian shape and some kind of authority the writers have only the writers like Gabriel Garcia Marquez we have claimed that only the writer can create such kind of utopian scenario or utopian country or utopian atmosphere by their right and that is his space. Finally, Gabriel Garcia Marce, Marquez was died on, uh, Marquez died on April 19, April 17, 2014, at home in Mexico City, uh, following complications from pneumonia. And he was 18.
step. Sorry. So, so thank you very much for attending the class.